Hey guys, Derek here with another video. Uh, so this is going to be part three of my PlayStation 2 Hidden Gems video, or yeah, Hidden Gems videos. And um, yeah, so uh, PlayStation 2, like I've talked about before, has just like a massive library. So um, yeah, I've just been going through the games that I have at least. And then um, this video is going to be kind of a mishmash between uh, games that kind of had a low print run and just no one really talks about, and then games that... Um, had decent runs and then um, people just don't talk about it anymore. Basically, these are games that people don't talk about. Um, most of them are very good games. Some of them are kind of iffy, um, but I figured I'd include them anyways just to, um, I guess, appeal to a larger crowd. <laughs> um, so the first game up is going to be Seven Samurai 20XX. And um, so this is going to be one of those ones that um, it's kind of like a low print run game. Um, maybe not necessarily the best game ever, but it's still kind of an interesting game. So this is like an action, um, beat em up, I guess. Uh, so you go like room to room, clearing rooms of enemies, and as you do that, like, the story progresses. So the combat in this game is kind of like Bujin Guy, except not as cinematic. Um, like, you play as Nato. Like, this is based off of Akira Kurosawa's, like, Seven Samurai story, or film, which is basically the same story, and, um, so you have a town that's getting attacked and they're looking for a samurai to help like defend the town and Nato just happens to be a samurai so he runs across the group that asks him to uh, help him. He doesn't want to help him but he's trying to like fight off um, the enemies anyways. Um, so like I said you go from like room to room clearing enemies and um, sometimes you run across a boss type enemy and then um, most times it's just clearing an enemy. Or clearing a room of enemies. At first, like the prologue chapter of this game, it's very slow, like you fight the same enemies over and over and it's just kind of like button mashing. But as you progress through the game, like you start getting a different variety of enemies. You start getting like huge floods of enemies, so like you're actually like, taking a lot of damage and you're trying not to die. So like the game does actually end up becoming pretty fun, but just kind of like right off the bat, it's um, a pretty slow game, so it might uh, turn some people off. But definitely an interesting one to um, pick up if you ever come across it. So next one up, I'd shown Shining Tears. I don't remember if it was in the first or second video. Um, but there's another like Shining game on the PlayStation 2. It's going to be Shining Force Neo. And as you can see, my cover or copy of the game is just absolutely covered in GameStop stickers. But um, it's still a pretty good game. Like I like the graphics better in Shining Tears than Shining Force Neo. Um, but it's still a pretty good game. So it's got like anime cutscenes, um, but for the most part, the character models are um, large 3D kind of cel shaded looking models. And um, like it's like other Shining games, it's an action RPG game. And um, yeah, like this one, I guess, kind of plays more so like a dungeon crawler. Like you um, kind of explore like a map of an area and then like in exploring the map of the area. You come across different sections with enemies in them and you destroy enemies. Uh, in that section you'll get like treasures that pop up and then um, yeah you're just kind of uh, clearing out rooms uh, in order to progress the story. So much like uh, Sam <laughs> Seven Samurai uh, this one is going room to room clearing enemies except I think this one's a little more interesting uh, just because the shining games tend to be a little more interesting and um, like the combat just feels a little bit better and then the variety of enemies is better. But definitely a cool game. Uh, I guess if you had to choose between uh, Shining Force Neo and Shining Tears, I'd definitely go with Shining Tears over it, but still pretty fun. I guess I'd better head back to my so next game up is going to be a fighting game. I think it's the first fighting game that I've had in these videos. Um, so it's going to be Arcana Heart, or Arcana Heart, however you want to pronounce it. Um, so it's pretty interesting. Like I don't think we got the second game in the West, but the third game came out on the uh, Vita and the PS3. It's like Arcana Heart. 3 love max or something like that max love anyways uh this is a pretty good fighter um i think playing this with an arcade fight stick is probably the way to go because the buttons are kind of all over the place on an actual controller but like the combat's still pretty good uh it's pretty fast like you're constantly like knocking each other across the screen so you're having to like chase each other down you can knock each other into the air and then fly into the air and then um just keep like combos and stuff going and then like um, you can choose different fighters and then each fighter can choose a different like arcana 
which is like a different elemental, I guess, uh, attribute to him. And um, it just kind of adds like a different layer to the game. So it's pretty cool. And then this is another one that's kind of like a low-ish, um, or at least it had low sales. So I would imagine there's not too many copies floating around. And then it's another Atlas published game. So if you're looking for Atlas games on PlayStation 2, uh, this one is one uh, that you would probably need. <laughs> So next game up after that is going to be, I guess, somewhat of a fighting game. It's going to be um, an arena fighter. Well, a lot of people were kind of mentioning it yesterday when I'd shown Gotcha Force. But um, this is another game in that series, but I think probably the original games to me were better than this one, but um, I just like the fact that it's at least on the PlayStation 2. But it's going to be Virtual on Mars. Um, so like I said, it's a giant robot arena fighter. With this game, like I played with the default um, controls when I first started playing the game and manipulating the camera was an absolute chore. So like I switched the uh, controls to like a twin stick style uh, control, kind of more arcadey. And um, it was definitely a lot easier to uh, manage playing this game. And it was a lot more fun because then you could like uh, dash and then turn at the same time and like shoot um, projectiles at the enemy and um, just kind of dash toward them and then like move in different directions. Whereas with the uh, actual like default camera set or default control settings, uh, it was a lot a lot more rigid and like you couldn't do a lot of the stuff that you could do like in the arcade games. But this game, like you play story mode, you can do <clears throat> a versus mode and um, like versus mode is pretty much a I think most people uh, remember the virtual lawn and then the story mode. Uh, it's kind of interesting, I guess. Like, it's not really the most original story, and it's not really the most engaging story, but it's how you can um, get more, like, um, virtuoids. There it is. <laughs> so you can get, like, unlock different virtuoids in the uh, story mode. And, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, cool game to play. Sega published game. Pretty fun. So, next game up is going to be one that I actually had gotten in a bundle of other PlayStation 2 games. Um, I was just going through and playing them, and then this game kind of stuck out to me as one that was pretty fun. Like, if I had come across it in a store or anywhere else, I probably would never have picked it up because I just would never have hunted it down. But it, it turned out to be a pretty fun game. So, it's going to be a Tokobot Plus. Um, the first game, like Tokobot, I guess Vanilla, uh, was a PSP game, but this game obviously is a PlayStation 2 game. Um, this kind of reminds me of a mix between like Legend of Zelda, uh, Evolution on the uh, Dreamcast, and like a uh, Tron Bond in a way. Um, so like you play as a character uh, named Bolt, and um, like in this world, uh, it's like years and years and years into the future. Uh, they are looking for relics and stuff in old like uh, ruins and stuff to kind of help them tell or like, to analyze the ruins and stuff that they find in the ruins to help them learn about the uh, civilizations that came before them. So like uh, the people in this world grew up to be like uh, treasure hunters basically. And um, Bolt is like trying to take the test to become like an official uh, treasure hunter. So like you're going into the um, first set of ruins and you've got these Tokobots basically, uh, which like in Trombon you had the little like Lego guys, I forgot what they're called, that you can like manipulate and then like uh, coordinate to uh, either defeat enemies or like help you get over obstacles and stuff. And in kind of like Legend of Zelda fashion, each ruin is basically like a temple. And you have to solve puzzles to make your way through the temple and use the Tokobots to um, kind of maneuver over like obstacles, uh, press switches, and then like set attack enemies and stuff. So it's a pretty interesting game, like, um, graphically it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, the voice acting in this game is actually pretty decent compared to some of the other games I've played. And, um, yeah, like, all around I guess it's a pretty good game. Like I said, like, I never would have actually looked at this game or even considered picking it up had I run across it in the store if I hadn't, like, gotten this game in the bundle and played it. So it's a pretty good game. All right, next one up is going to be another Atlas game. It's going to be a, um, a strategy RPG game. Um, the artwork, or like the art design in it's pretty good. Uh, the story seems like it's kind of dragging on. I guess it's like a 20 to 30 hour game, so I haven't finished it yet. But like starting it, I at least got kind of sucked into it and played it for a while. Uh, but it's going to be Stella Du. And um, like I said, it, it is a strategy RPG game. 
And uh, I don't think this released on any other system. So PlayStation 2 is it. I could be wrong. If I am wrong, go ahead and mention it in the comment section like I'm pretty sure people would anyways. Um, but like I said, uh, strategy RPG, um, I don't really know. Like it plays like a, any other strategy RPG, I guess. But like I said, the uh, the animation of it, I guess I kind of like the story uh, is kind of iffy. Like it's not... At least in the beginning, it's not really that great. Like, um, evil guys come to the kingdom. They uh, are taking over the world, but there's also this thing called Miasma that's slowly destroying the world. Um, so there's a guy named Visor. He's trying to use magic to fight off the Miasma and then save the planet from being destroyed by it. And then he also ends up joining the evil force because they want to use his um, arcane magic to continue to take over the world but if the world's going to be destroyed then it's kind of like well who cares if you take over the world that's just kind of like where i'm at right now it's kind of like why are you killing off people and trying to take over the world if the world's going to be destroyed anyways but um you have uh spiro i think was the main character's name uh spiro and then he ends up teaming up with a bunch of uh people like he actually becomes a team leader and the people on his team like become his friends and then um you just see their kind of um, moral dilemmas uh, dealing with the world ending and then trying to take over a kingdom. Basically, that's the uh, the premise of the game. So I guess it's just seeing like all of that unravel and um, playing through a strategy RPG. Like the combat in that game is actually pretty good. And like you can do team-based attacks that um, do a lot of damage. And then, yeah, it's just got the normal tropes of a strategy RPG game. Anyways, cool game. And I don't think that game is really a bank bust or you might pay like a little bit in an Atlas tax, but like if you find it in a local game shop that doesn't really care about like Atlas games, you could probably get it for a pretty cheap price because I don't think too many people are actively hunting that game down. So the next one up is going to be a working designs game. It's going to be Sylphie the Lost Planet. This is a shmup, a uh, vertical scrolling shmup. And um, in this game, like you're fighting off an alien invasion. And um, it plays basically like any other shmup, except at the beginning of each level you can select like a left weapon and a right weapon. And um, basically you're stuck with that until like the midpoint in the stage where you can get like a refuel, like which will um, build your health back up and then you can select uh, your weapons again and then you'll be stuck with those weapons going through the second half of the stage up until the boss fight. So in that respect, um, like the gameplay of the game is actually pretty good, but being stuck with the same weapons kind of sucks because there's not really power-ups that you can get to uh, help you. Like, if you choose the wrong weapons and, um, yeah, if you choose the wrong weapons, basically, you're going to be kind of screwed, and um, you're probably going to have to play the level over again. But, like, the actual level designs, the enemy designs, the graphics in general of this game are really good, and for the most part, the gameplay is really good. It's just trial and error trying to pick the right weapons for... Uh, the right levels. So like I think just playing through the game, figuring it out the first time will make playing through the game later better. Or if you just read a guide before you play this game, uh, that'll tell you like what, what weapons to pick on whatever level. And that'll probably save you a lot of headache. But it's a great game. Alright, going from there, uh, the next games I'll show are really good games. Um, pretty positive they're based on uh, Ghosts and Goblins and like that series of games. Um, but it's like a 3D action game and um, one of the last like really great 3D action games. Like, you can't really think of any recent games that have been that good. Anyways, uh, it's going to be the Maximo series. So Maximo Ghost of Glory and then uh, Maximo Army of Zen. These are definitely, well, this one got... Uh, had significantly lower sales, at least what I was able to find, than the first game. But the first game had sales of like 400,000 copies or something. And then this one had like 100,000 copies. But um, the first game, like it had a lot going for it, but there's just some things that kind of annoyed me. Like the camera was probably the biggest thing that annoyed me in this game. And that like if you're standing next to a ledge or something, and like you had been walking away and then you turned around like you can't manipulate the camera yourself like you're just gonna have to walk forward and jump and pray that the camera doesn't pose you over whereas in um army of zen they fixed it so that 
the camera would still like automatically swing and follow uh, Maximo around, but you could also manipulate it yourself. So you could turn it and um, take a look around at things before um, like walking off cliffs and then dying. So like if you were pressed for time or just really wanted to pick one over the other, I would definitely pick Army of Zen over Ghost of Glory because Army of Zen is just a really great game. Like the the things that I had problems with in the first game, they definitely fixed in the second game. And uh, I think overall, in general, the second game is just a lot more fun to play than the first game. But both of them, I think, are definitely worth picking up. Um, basically, I think this whole like IP has been abandoned because I don't think it's released on anything else. I don't think there's plans for a sequel. And I have n haven't heard anybody really talk about the Maximo series. Uh, since these games, so uh, both of these definitely worth uh, picking up and playing on the PlayStation 2, basically since that's the only way you're going to be able to play them. <laughs> okay, so after that um, is another series of games from Age Tech. Um, they're going to be uh, like they're going to be kind of in a, a category of their own. They're natural survive, natural disaster survival games. So that's basically probably giving it away for people who know about them. But it's going to be Disaster Report and then Raw Danger. So um, Raw Danger is actually the only one that I've played, but it's a sequel to Disaster Report. So I've got to imagine it plays basically the same as Disaster Report. And um, I think there's like four games in this series. Uh, we've only gotten these two in the West, but a new one is supposedly coming out for the Wii U, I believe. I'm pretty positive it's the Wii U. But these are great games. Like, I picked up uh, Raw Danger. Like, I've got two copies of Raw Danger, obviously. Um, this one sealed, and then my copy of Disaster Report sealed. Um, but I picked up a copy of Raw Danger at my local game shop for $3. And then they had a copy of Disaster Report there, too. But it was only disc only, and then they printed out, like, a cover. It was, like, black and white printed out cover that they stuck in the case. And that one was, like, $5. So, I... Uh, if I ever get um, the desire to play it, I'll just probably bust open this one. But uh, Raw Danger, I do like playing through and uh, I like it a lot. So yeah, like um, in Raw Danger, you start the game off as like a waiter. And then like you're at this like government party and then it's like Christmas time. And um, yeah, it's just kind of interesting interacting with everybody and kind of seeing like all the side stories playing off uh, on the sidelines. And then um, everyone's kind of talking about like this water leak that's happening. And then you slowly start seeing the water building up inside this building. And then all hell breaks loose. And then uh, the city floods. So like it's your um, your duty to help this character, I guess, survive uh, this giant flood that's happening. And um, yeah, so like the game is just really interesting. And then like Age Tech. Um, I'm pretty positive. No, it's an Irem published game or Irem developed game. But Age Tech has a, um, a great category on the PS2 or catalog on the PS2 of just interesting games. Like, there's no combat in this game. It's just you against the elements. Like, if you get wet, you have to go to a save point and then stand next to the save point to dry off. Otherwise, like, you'll like start losing health and like you won't be optimal because you'll be cold and then like slowly like losing health. And, like, it's just slow, like, little things like that. Like, Echo Knight Beyond, how it wasn't really a combat-driven game, but it was, like, it's still a really interesting game. Um, anyways, I'm just get off that tangent. But Raw Danger and Disaster Report, definitely two games to pick up if you ever run across them. And then the last two games that I have to show are um, going to be, like, a collection of arcade games, uh, kind of like Taito Legends, SNK Arcade Classics, and Daddy East Arcade Classics. Um, this one is Capcom Classics Collections, and um, kind of like with Taito Legends, the second one is the one I would recommend, but uh, you've got Capcom Classics Collection Volume 1, this one, um, I think it said like 1982 to 1992 uh, was basically the uh, focus of this collection, and then you've got uh, Capcom Collections Volume 2, and um, this one more so focused on like the early 90s it seemed like to like the latest 90s as far as games go like this one is just like a, a freaking powerhouse of um 16 bit like side scrolling beat em ups and then um a couple of shoot em ups and um one like one or two fighting games like street fighter first game or second game is on here but 
in uh, Volume 1, if that's the one that you happen to find and pick up and play, um, the only games that I found really worth playing were like XX's, um, Forgotten Worlds, uh, what else was there, Gunsmoke, Final Fight, and then there was one more. I don't know, I can't remember. But Forgotten Worlds is probably like the number one game for me on the first disc. That game is just so freaking fun. And um, on Volume 2, like there's just so many on Volume 2. Um, Eco Fighters is probably the one that was the, the one that stood out to me the most. It's a side-scrolling shmup. I guess the story with that one was it was developed to kind of bring awareness to um, fighting, uh, fighting, like polluting the planet basically. So a lot of it is focused on like um, aquatic, uh, like bosses and aquatic environments and stuff, and you can see like different uh, smog and pollution happening. Um, but like graphically, the game looks so freaking good, and then it plays so good. And then you can use like the right analog stick to uh, move this little like um, arm in front of your ship to like fire in multiple directions. It's just it's a really good game. There's also uh, Captain Commando. Like this is a side-scrolling beat 'em up. Um, you can play as a baby in a mech beating things up. You can play as a baby in a mech and jump in a mech, so it's like mechception. It's freaking amazing. Um, there's also uh, Knights of the Round, side scroll and fantasy beat em up. Um, actually, there's a lot of the PlayStation, or not PlayStation, a lot of the Super Nintendo beat em ups that go for uh, high dollars on this disc. So, like I said, Knights of the Round, um, there was Magic Sword. Uh, King of the Dragons, and um, what else was there? There was a couple of other ones. Um, yeah, that was it, I guess, for the fantasy one. Uh, another one was um, Mega Twins. That one is a very good looking side scrolling beat em up. A lot of these games, I think, also got like Turbo Graphics 16 first because they look very much like Turbo Graphics games. Um, but yeah, like, if I had to recommend any game of the games that I've showed in this video, I seem to do this in every video, but Capcom Classics Collection Volume 2, definitely the one I would recommend. You can get this one on Amazon, brand new from Capcom, for $21, uh, if you're a Prime member, free shipping. Um, so yeah, like, this game, definitely the one I would recommend, just because there's so many great games- oh, I forgot! Uh, I just saw it in the front. I can't remember what it was called. Bark, I think it was. I'm pretty sure it's named Bark. Uh, it's like a, um, it's kind of like Botsy Gun in the way that it looks like the color palette. And like you're in a car, you can speed up, slow down. And um, it's a vertical shot, so like you're shooting at things, you can speed up, slow down. And um, it just looks so, so good. I can't say enough good things about Capcom Classic Collection. Uh, volume 2. Volume 2, I want to stress Volume 2. But yeah guys, uh, that's going to be it for uh, this Hidden Gems video. Um, I might actually do a fourth video because there are a few more games that I want to talk about. Um, but it might be a month or two from now. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you at least found one game that you found interesting. Uh, if you have any like suggestions for Hidden Gems, go ahead and throw them down in the comment section for me and everybody else to read, and um, yeah, hope you guys have a great weekend, thanks for watching the video, take it easy, later.